about the temperature right now. I've got to be honest with you, I think the weatherman uh, has already won. But believe me, I'm saying 15 degrees. Give me a couple more and we're going to get there. I don't think it's going to get to 18 like Barbara thinks. It is Thursday, August 25th. And uh, today, well, the very first time we're heading over to uh, Nairobi and we've never been there before. So we're making history being joined, would you believe, by Irie Priest. Uh, but in the meantime, let me do this. And at the same time, I've got to welcome along everybody that's joining us live this morning here at Galaxy. It is an absolute pleasure to have you, especially everybody on Facebook. If you kind of be watching this a little later on over there on YouTube, well, you know what to do, right? No, you do. Seriously. Sub, thumb, bell. Bingo. Uh, bell notifications where we have important people, much like Irie Priest joining us today. Believe me, you're going to love this. You really are. And at the same time, get epileptic with the thumb thing. Like us. Go on. Double, 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 down. Dare you. Literally. Uh, sub, subscribe. Yeah, it's that simple. Become part of the family. Uh, we call it the noise here at Galaxy because literally it is growing exponentially. It really, really is. So uh, join us. Be part of our family. We would love to have you. Uh, in the meantime, let me tell you how happy we are to be in association with Rise Up TV, Big Record, Sony Music, The Orchard, here at Galaxy. Another in the Artist Interview brought to you by Galaxy 107 FM in association with Rise Up TV, Big Record, and Sony Music, The Orchard. I told you we were that happy about it. We really, really are. But having said that, believe me, you know this. Check it out. Well, well, Galaxy FM questions, okay? Hi. <laughs> okay. Uh, by the way, nice if you need a psychiatrist you. or anything after this, because maybe it's not well, the interview you expect, and you, well, yeah, <laughs> um, we do have one in your area. All right. Um, Jimmy Buffett is joining us. Nice to have you back, Jimmy. It really is. Uh, Got to say hi to Chaz Ford as well. Thank you very much for introducing us to Ari and uh, also to Marvel 42 in Uganda, uh, uh, of course he's our uh, ambassador over there, nice to have him with us here at Galaxy, he's an absolute gem, he really is, we couldn't do a lot without him. <clears throat> we have about two minutes to go and then we'll go live to the desk, okay? Um, Alright. And, and about halfway through this I'll let you know how many countries are tuned in, how many cities, and at the end of this, I'll let you know how many people were tuned into this as well. Um, having said that, though, I usually get a few fan questions from time to time, so we'll throw those in, the appropriate ones anyway. Uh, Samantha Shelton is joining us. Hello, Samantha. Nice to have you on board. Um, uh, Samantha Shelton Eubanks, by the way. <laughs> and uh, it is an absolute pleasure to have you. It really, really is. 
got Jimmy, about a minute Jimmy and a half. Buffett. Yeah, absolutely. Love and Jimmy Buffett. We really, really are. So, <clears throat> still warm in here. <laughs> we have Kiwi air conditioning in effect. Okay. Uh, Kiwi air conditioning growers literally open the window. <laughs> you know what I mean? Might be hot in Kenya. Okay. Yeah, what, what is the temperature there? Uh, it's like 20, 20 degrees Celsius, I think. Okay, that, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. We've been getting a lot of that. Because uh, you're in Celsius, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Celsius. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of that through winter time, which is really weird, because normally we're about 14, 15, you know what I mean? Yeah. Today, 12. Yeah, I don't mind. Crazy. That. The other day, what, yeah. 23, 24 degrees? Yes, it's, yeah, usually, Up and down. usually have the heat on it. Anyway, let's go to the desk. <laughs> That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, so very, very happy to have you join me, and today we are in, <laughs> believe me, never been here before in Nairobi in Kenya, believe me, uh, I'm talking to Irie Priest, now Irie, let me put you in on Irie, he's a uh, singer-composer in the reggae faith, literally, believe me, it is an absolute pleasure, and introduced to us by Chaz Ford, coming out of the UK. Love Chess. We really do. She does a great job. She certainly does. Uh, having said that, Ari, welcome to Galaxy. Thank you. Thank you very much, DJ Brown. Now, Ari, uh, i, I got to say, first of all, uh, thank you for being up at this time of the morning for you. Uh, believe me, it's uh, very brave of you. It really was. If somebody said to me, get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and talk to somebody in New Zealand, believe me, I'd be saying where they could get off on the bus. You know what I mean? <laughs> I really would. Uh, now, Irie, uh, I, I want, we started off well with the uh, Elki Bulan track. Now, tell me a little bit about this track. How did you come to the lyrics of that? Well, Elki Bulan is an ancient name of Africa. And so I decided like, uh, to, to tell the story of an, uh, ancient Africa as it was. That's how I came with, uh, with the song Al Kibulan. Okay, uh, and believe me, my bro, love, love, loving it. I really, really am. Donnie Coulter is joining us. Nice to have you on board, Donnie. It really, really is. And looking forward to catching up with you over the next number of months as well. Uh, so, at the same time, my friend, I've got to ask you, uh, Troy, coming out of Austin, Texas, is asking... Uh, Irie, how do we get hold of you as a fan? Are you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? Are you on Instagram? Are you a talker? Uh, but more importantly, do you respond? Yeah, I'm on Facebook and uh, I'm, I'm on uh, Instagram. Um, I'm not on uh, Twitter, but I'm on Facebook and Instagram, yeah. And I, I, I usually respond. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't have said that at all, believe me. I don't respond to anybody. I have people do that for me. I really, really do. Uh, there's so many people want to talk to me all at once. I just don't have the time anymore to be able to do it and be able to work here at the same time. And this is a very demanding job. It really is. Uh, but so, believe me, Irie, I would never have said, yeah, I respond. Uh, you're going to have another 5,000 Facebook fans now. You're never going to get anything done. Yeah, I have I have a team that I work with, and they also help me in, in responding to some of these uh, uh, messages and uh, reactions from uh, different people. <laughs> That's cool management. Good on you. Love, love, love that idea. That's why I have people do it for me as well. Believe me, I do. Uh, now, at the same time, Irie, uh, believe me, I, I have literally the bio here but not a lot of information about Irie, the man, the artist, the singer, the songwriter, 
at all. So I'm going to ask some difficult questions. And Irie, be prepared for this. How long have you right. been an entertainer? I've been an entertainer like um, more than uh, 20 years now. But I've been, uh, I, 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 when I started music, I, I did some, some uh, several songs. But then I, I, I went off the music scene a little bit because I had established uh, an organization that is helping uh, the girls in empowering them through the sport of boxing. So I've all, all also been there trying to to make the organization to to be grounded and uh, to stand. And so right now I'm coming back to my music. But I've been uh, doing music. I have several songs that I've done and I'm now doing an album that is called Al Kibla. Now, Irene, I've got to be honest with you, I have a lot of respect for you. In fact, all of our staff have a lot of respect for you. I do want to talk about the box girls very, very shortly. I really, really do. Uh, J.D. on Cadence joining us as well. Uh, of course, coming from Big Records, Rise Up TV and Sony Music, The Orchard, right here at Galaxy. Nice to have J.D. on Cat. And believe me, absolute pleasure. Love you guys, really do. Uh, now, Irie, at the same time, um, the style of music that you're performing right now, what was the influences that got you into reggae? Oh, the kind of influence I got from reggae, I, I got influence from reggae from the, the lifestyle that uh, we were living during the, uh, those days, and uh, it was really difficult, so I could, I could hear reggae, listen to reggae, and reggae was speaking to me, reggae was talking to me, so that made me very much fond of reggae, and it influenced me also, so it made me also become a, 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 a reggae artist. I wanted to sing, and I decided now I have to sing reggae because it influenced me in a big way. Well, you know, I respect that, I really, really do. And at the same time, <clears throat> I have a friend of mine coming out of Papua New Guinea uh, that I think you would absolutely love to be able to meet, literally, I really do. So I'm going to get Barbara to introduce you to Anselm uh, a little later on at some stage, believe me. Uh, after we do the interview, please please don't go anywhere just yet after we do this interview because we do do a few backstage things as well, put it all into a big movie and uh, believe me, you'll get a copy of everything we do, you really will. Uh, but I've got to ask you, Irie, have you ever been a cartoon before? Sorry, come again. Have you ever been a cartoon before? No, no, no. Oh, well, you're going to be now, <laughs> believe me. Uh, we, we put it all in a big movie, put it up there on YouTube. That'll be around for when the dinosaurs come back. Uh, but we also convert it into a cartoon. And, and I've got to let you know, Irie, uh, it's one of the few things that makes me look good. <laughs> if you know what I mean. I got the perfect face for radio. I do. And, and by the way, uh, the staff do say I talk too much here. And, and I love that thing of that voiceover that you did uh, about me talking too much as well. Well done. Love it, love it, love it. But I'm paid to do it. Uh, it's not just written. Uh, in, in fact, Irie, it was written. Tell me about it was written. It was written uh, is uh, just the happenings around the world, and I'm comparing them to the scriptures uh, yeah, as they were written, as it was written in Revelation, the book of uh, in, in in Bible, and I'm just trying to to talk about the unfoldings of uh, what is happening in the world and uh, comparing to what was written then in the Revelation. Well, I can let you know. Uh, people are requesting it, they really, really are, and I do actually play you in my car. I'm a big fan of reggae, I've got to be honest with you, and I'm loving this. Here's Irie Priest, It Was Written, at Galaxy. How are you feeling, my friend? I'm cool. <laughs> uh, JD on uh, JD on Cat is saying, ah, I'm blushing. Uh, face mama loves, yeah. <laughs> Milton Blake, hello Milton. 
nice to have you back, brother man. Another it really, great really reggae is. singer. Yeah, another great reggae singer. He really, really is. Blessings Hi, to Milton. you, brother. <laughs> Absolutely Hi, blessing. On cat. You're in good company, my friend. You really, really are. So believe me, it's Thanks worthwhile you. you being up. It really is. How many countries are joining us? Thank you. There's 184 countries from around the world tuned into this interview, my friend. You're a superstar. Thank you, DJ Grant. <laughs> Believe me, the honour the honor is mine, my friend. It really, really is. Um, Not for respect. <laughs> Milton Blake says, hi, king and queen. <clears throat> Why are you... <laughs> I've never been a king before. Thank you. You, you uh, humble me. You really do. Oh, JD on Cat says Canada's a fan. I just thought I'd be there. There we go. Just, um, literally, my friend, we, we're in association with a TV company over in Canada called Rise Up TV. All right. They're also a record label over there, and they're currently embarking on a world tour. Now, uh, what they've been doing recently is they've got a big bus. Okay, and they go and pick up artists, put them on stage, tour them around the country a little bit, you know, and it's all done with the TV crew as well. So basically what goes on the road no longer stays on the road. Anything, anything can be filmed, you know what I mean? It's all part of a documentary. Uh, they're currently heading over to Ireland very, very shortly. Then they're going to India. I think they're also going to Norway, uh, places like that. Heading France. over, going to France as well. Um, then they're heading over to Papua New Guinea, where I was talking to you about my friend Anselm over there. They're going over there to do a little show with him. And then they're coming here to New Zealand and being a part of that as well. I have a feeling that the guys, the management from Rise Up TV, want to go to Africa. So you never know if. Barbara gets in touch with you, you never know, they may want to come over to Nairobi and do a show over there. Would you be interested in meeting up with these guys? Yeah, definitely. I would be very much interested, at DJ Grant. Very Enough good. respect for yeah. what you're doing, you and, and Barbara. I say big up. Uh, it's, a, it's a great job you're doing, and uh, I, I say enough respect for you. Well, thank you, my brother. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> believe me. If it wasn't for people like you, the artists, the songwriters, the performers, the entertainers, I wouldn't have a job. So please, keep doing what you're doing, okay? Thank you, thank you. Donnie Coulter said I had a nice chat with Mark Rosner. Well done, Donnie. That's yeah. good moves. Sign up with them. That's a good move, Donnie. It really is. Mark's a wonderful man. He really is. <laughs> joined of course by Irie Priest coming out of uh, Kenya and uh, Shana from Botswana is asking Irie are you doing any live work at the moment are you doing any stage work are you looking at touring yeah I was looking forward to start uh, doing uh, touring uh, if I get the opportunities after I finish my my album which is uh, soon coming and uh, I wouldn't mind doing touring uh, if I get the opportunities. Very, yeah. very cool. Because believe me, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people around the world would love to see you live on stage, uh, including myself, literally. And I'm going to ask you a question about that 
very, very shortly. But I do have a lot of respect for you, my friend. I really, really do. Uh, Barbara, also very, very respectful of you, as with the rest of the crew. And I want to talk to you about the Box Girls. Tell me about this. How did you get involved with this? Yeah, like I told you when I was doing music uh, and uh, I, I decided to come to do the boxing for girls, it was because uh, after the post-election violence that happened in Kenya, that was in 2007, I, I, uh, the women and girls were the much affected lot in that violence and, and the children. And so there wasn't any voice for, 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 for the girls, especially those ones who are in the marginalized communities. So I decided now, what do I do? Because there's also so much that is surrounding uh, the, the, the I mean, surrounding them that is challenging their lives, which is stereotypes, you know. And so I decided now, how do do I come in? Uh, and uh, an idea came that I use the boxing uh, sport to empower the girls, because the boxing sport will provoke a, 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 a will provoke a conversation. Because, you know, boxing has been perceived a male domain sport. So by girls doing the sport, they will be challenging the stereotypes. And then they will be, uh, I mean, like inviting uh, 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 conversation surrounding that. And so uh, it was an, a platform for the girls to have a voice so that they can, uh, they can voice out, they can speak on uh, issues that are challenging them, and then they can try to overcome these issues. So that's how I came with the Box Girls. And the vision of Box Girls was uh, to create a world where every girl has a power to take advantage of opportunities for herself and create opportunities for other girls. And the mission is to create a world where every girl and woman, they live dignified lives in secure communities and they are valued as equal partners with equal opportunities and they have control over their bodies. That was the mission. And so that was uh, uh, how Box Dance came in. And that's why I, I decided now to come up with the, the organization. Okay, now, Eric, respect for that. Huge, huge respect for that. But um, I was brought up in a boxing ring as a younger <clears throat> man. Believe me, I really, really was. We had one in our backyard. And uh, we were forever yeah. in there every day. Every day our father had us in the boxing ring. Literally. Having, having said that, what's your pedigree on boxing? How did you get into boxing yourself? What have you got to do with boxing these days? How, how did you... Well, well, what are you drawing your information from? What's your past? Uh, okay, I, I was born in the Eastlands parts of Nairobi. And the Eastlands is a, is a uh, very dangerous place and in terms of... Uh, Opportunities are not there. The, the, there's too much violence within the area. And so it was just a, uh, something that uh, I needed to do I was, uh, as I was uh, uh, growing up as a kid. I had to go in the, and, and, and join boxing and join boxing so that I could also defend myself in the, in the environment that I was uh, living in. So I was doing boxing and musicals. I, you couldn't separate me with the two. Uh, I, I could go to the gym, but still come out of the gym and continue with my music practice and recordings. Sometimes I, I don't even know how I, I manage that, but somehow I think it's because of passion. And so right now I'm into boxing, not as a boxer, but I'm into boxing as a founder of Box Dance. And also I personally train uh, some of these girls who are really making Kenya proud because I take it as my initiative to train them. And uh, I have managed like, to train uh, 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 the first lady who represented Africa and Kenya in the Olympic that was in the UK, that was also hosting uh, for the first time female boxers. And uh, this time round also I managed like to take another uh, lady boxer who was also in the Commonwealth and she will also be in the Olympics. Uh, but uh, all in all, I, I also have like... Uh, 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 professional boxers. I have Sarah Chen, who is number 10 ranked in the world, and she's the number one in Africa also for my stable. But besides that, Box Girl itself is, is, wasn't about the boxing excellence as per se. Uh, it, it's about creating opportunities. So I have like 3,000 3, uh, 
500 girls in, in, in the program. I have girls in Nairobi here at the capital city of Kenya, and we also work with girls in the rural areas. So my, my work is uh, just to oversee the, 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 the program and also like just to train the, those ones, the few girls who are taking up boxing as their career. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Chris Anders is joining us. Uh, we did an interview with Chris just the other day. Absolutely fantastic. He's a wonderful artist. He really is. So folks, go and check out Chris Anders as well. Uh, now, at the same time, let's talk boxing again. Let's go back a little bit to boxing. Uh, but I'm going to do this a little bit backwards. Literally, a little bit All backwards. Right. Yeah. Uh, simply because... Uh, we would love you to come to New Zealand and perform in front of New Zealand audiences on New Zealand stages. Uh, I'll let you contemplate, or let that one permeate for a minute. Uh, but at the same time, I'm going to throw you a challenge. Uh, I've got a few ladies that love to get in the ring and have a little bit of a, uh, a play, if you want to put it like that. Uh, some of these young ladies do have belts. Would you be interested in meeting our ladies with your ladies for a round or two of boxing. Yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice if they could, uh, they, they could, uh, they could meet. Yeah. Let's put some belts on it and uh, let's have some fun. Believe me, uh, I think maybe about uh, half a dozen of your ladies against half a dozen of our ladies. Once we get that out the way, let's have a concert. What do you reckon? Yeah, fine. It will be fireworks. I, it's nice. Yeah, be different. I, I support. I support that. Yeah. That is a rocking idea. Really, really is. Love, love, love that idea. We're going to work on something like that. Believe me, we would love to have you here in New Zealand, and uh, we will talk about that very, very shortly. But I want to talk about window pane. Tell me about this. <coughs> window pane is a love song. And uh, Window Pen is a love song that I, I, I decided not to compose because I was uh, having a flashback of where I was coming from in terms of my journey, my, my love journey, and I was reflecting. And so I decided to dedicate the Window Pen as a journey of where I'm coming from in terms of love to my, my, my beautiful wife, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Joining us on the same day today. In different countries, yes, he's coming out of Nairobi. We're coming out of New Zealand. Here's Irie Priest and Window Pain. <laughs> How you feeling, brother? You okay? I'm okay. Nice, nice. Uh, you, you don't need a stiff drink or anything like that? <laughs> no, I'm cool. I'm cool. Okay. I'm cool. Special coffee, something like that. Believe <laughs> me. Um, so we've got See Dem Come Irie, this is your most requested track Literally, people love this track And um, I'll, yeah. I'll give you the stats on how many people are requesting it All that sort of thing in a minute uh, But I just want to let you know This is good work, my friend We would love, love, love it If you want to release more music with us And come back for another interview Would you consider that? Yeah. <laughs> that means another late night though, bro. It really does. <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. Unfortunately, we don't make the time zones. <laughs> we really don't. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear, oh, dear. There has to be a way of stopping Everyone the violence. I like what don't you think? I read does. Not only for yeah. girls, but he provides sanitary and needs for girls. I think that's they, wonderful. Uh, what's come again, there, ha there has to be a way of stopping the violence. Violence is agree. illogical. It is not logical. It really isn't. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And uh, you see, here in New Zealand, we're relatively safe, if you know what I mean. I mean, we certainly have our little internal stuff going on that every country has, but... We're a peace loving people. I give thanks. We're yeah. a we're I give thanks this this time round. There wasn't any violence after after our election, although there is a dispute that has been challenged in court. But uh, there is no violence, and uh, we give thanks for that. Well, you see, here when we have an election, we don't 
go to those extremes. We really don't. I've, as I say, I was talking to a friend of mine coming out of Papua New Guinea. They've just gone through elections. He's actually, uh, he ran to be part of the government. You know what I mean? <clears throat> this this guy, very powerful guy in his own country. Um, but the violence in there was phenomenal, just for an election. Woman, woman got if up. we don't agree, we go to the pub and have a beer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's as far as yeah, it goes. So yeah, elections, uh, elections violence are uh, uh, not a good thing. No, it's just not logical, you know? Yeah. If, if you yeah. Get, everybody should have the vote, everybody should have the right to vote, and everybody should have the right to be safe to vote. True, true that. You know, so... Yeah. Believe, I, I'm a big one for anti-violence. I really, really am. Um, I'm also a very... Yeah, me too. We don't we don't support violence in any way. No, no, absolutely not. Yeah, because yeah, with violence there can never be any kind of development whatsoever. No, no absolutely not. I'm also a big softy for animals too, though. That's my problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm too much in love with yeah. animals. <clears throat> Me too. I love animals. Maybe we uh, we are we, we have some some things uh, that are, are bringing us together. I love animals, most of the dogs. I have, I have dogs, I love dogs. Yeah, we've got a couple as well. <laughs> Big ones too, by the way. They're about 40 kilo. Let's go back to the desk. Ooh. We've got See Them Come coming up. Now, i got to be honest with you, Irie, uh, I have a number of people that are dying to meet you, believe me, uh, Franco Nanucci is one man, and uh, a number of other people as well, so believe me, these are all humanitarian people, they really, really are, and I think you have something in common with all of these people, and you never know, good things might actually be created out of it, I've got to be honest with you. Uh, but having said that, and I've got to applaud you for the... Uh, uh, for the hygiene part of the thing that you do as well. that That's absolutely superb. It really, really is, and we respect that as well. Uh, but I want to talk to you about Starline Productions. Let's have a plug for Starline P Productions. Tell me all about it. Starline Production is, uh, is a, a production house that uh, I started myself. And uh, the, I, I really started the Starland production so that it could also bring up uh, other new upcoming artists in, this, in the radio scene. So it's, a, it's the production table that I'm using to, to promote and produce my work uh, currently. And uh, it's also an avenue for other artists to come and also showcase and uh, do their, their artistic work uh, to, under that umbrella too. Very, so that is the Starland production. Very, very cool. Now, Trish, coming out of Adelaide, is asking, now, at the same time of coming to New Zealand to perform in front of New Zealand audiences, would you come to Australia as well? Uh, <laughs> believe me, a uh, wonderful place to go and play, literally. Uh, but I've got to ask you, do you know much about, do you know much about New Zealand? No, not much. <clears throat> the only much I know about New Zealand is uh, through reading. Okay, well, yeah, but not much. Yeah. Let, let me give you the short story about New Zealand, literally. Uh, we're made up of three islands. Uh, right down the bottom of New Zealand is a little island called Stuart. It's the only island in New Zealand uh, that has a name, literally. Uh, it's Stuart. Uh -huh. Good manly name, Stuart, it really is. Uh, but whoever named New Zealand after that lost all imagination completely out the window called the next island south. 
<laughs> Yay. And, and then, of course, where we are, we're North Ireland. So basically, yeah, literally, we... I don't, I don't know what would be good names now that we're south and north, you know what I mean? So that's up for debate yeah. as well. Uh, I also want to rename the moon, so, you know, don't worry about me. Having said that, uh, I, uh, we would love to have you here in New Zealand, show you around our country, and also entertain the box girls, show them around New Zealand as well, and uh, get to know not only you, but have you know us and some of our culture, everything like that. And then, yes, let's take you over to Australia and do some shows over there as well. Uh, and believe me, I think you would absolutely love the tour. I really, really do. Uh, most definitely. So, uh, believe me, we would love to be able to have you over there. Now, at the same time, Trish was also asking... Uh, while this pandemic was going on, did you do more writing and recording rather than stage work? Were you, were you doing more of that than anything else? Yeah, it was more of writing and recording. And also I was doing also more of uh, also helping my son who is uh, 14 years old and he's also an artist and uh, he's a hip-hop artist. So I was also helping him in, in his work. He has now done like two songs and I've also helped him to do a video. Uh, yeah, so I was uh, writing and uh, recording uh, alongside my son too. Well, you know, I think there's a silver lining to the pandemic. I really, really do. It gave the artists time to breathe and create. You know what I mean? It really did. A lot of time artists are too busy on stage doing touring and on the roads and everything. And the writing itself and the, um, uh, the creativity usually is done on the road on the rush. <laughs> no, yeah. uh, but the pandemic literally it gave every artist around the world time to sit back, breathe, think about what they're putting together and put it into effect and start recording it. It's a plethora, a plethora of new music coming out right now. And I'm loving it. I really, really am. As a DJ for a radio station, there is so much new music out there. And of course, Galaxy only uh -huh. plays the best music in the world. And you can see them come. You can tell me about See Them Come. Yeah, See Them Come is also a new song that I, I also wrote during the pandemic, as you say, and I recorded it also during that time. And it speaks about the unfoldings also. It talks about uh, so much that is happening in the world. It talks about the violence all over the world. That was also before the Ukraine and Russia broke into the war. But I was just uh, pointing towards that direction that the world is so much into violence. There's so much happening, so much sufferings in the world. And it's all in the CDM com. So in the CDM com, I'm just trying to say that I'm seeing what is happening. And uh, I see the way things are happening and the, the wickedness that is coming with all this negativity. And uh, I was also trying to compare it with uh, the, 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 the revelation uh, as it is written in the, in the books of uh, the Bible. Yeah. Well, i got to let you know, Irie, uh, I play CDM Come in my breakfast show. I get so many requests for it. In fact, uh, 2,400 an 88 request and climbing so far so believe me people are identifying with it and it's on a daily basis we put the breakfast show together on the amount and who and what the artist is what the track is everything like that on the amount of requests and believe me you're there you're right there people are requesting you all the time here at galaxy is i repressed and see them come <laughs> How are we feeling, bro? We all good? Yeah, I'm good, DJ Grant. Nice. Well, we're almost there, bro. We'll be able to get you back to bed very, very shortly, okay? No, no worry, no problem. I'm here for you. Oh, bro, I'm here for you. Honest, I really am. I'm very humbled to meet you, brother man. Yeah, I'm humbled to DJ I Grant. Really I was looking forward to meeting you and talking to you and uh, Barbara. And all the team, and it's nice having you in this conversation. Yeah, thank Ab you absolutely. Much. And you know what? Third time lucky. <laughs> First time Barbara had a tree down, then we had technical difficulties, and well, you know, it is so good to get this one done.
really is. Uh, but I go, I do yeah. got to ask you, my friend. Will you come back again? Yeah, I will. Nice, nice. I'll wake him up again. You'll wake him up again. Yeah. Good girl. <laughs> Very well done. Um, having yeah. said, having said that, look. Um, Sorry. When you get your um, EP done, how would you like to send us a few copies? We'd love to do a giveaway for you. To send that, to send you some copies, yeah. I can I can send you. Yeah, you can just give me maybe a place where I can uh, send them, and then I, I I tell the people who are helping me. They send you uh, directly there. Nice. I'll I'll get Barbara to give you all those details, and, and in fact. If you actually have an Irene Priest t-shirt, send me one. Because believe me, bro, uh, when I'm doing these interviews, people actually go on the interwebby thing and find out who I'm wearing. Nickel slots. Oh, you go. <laughs> Can't see from the bed. Uh, but believe me, great band. Love them. Good friends of ours. We've known them for years now. Believe me. Go and check out the slots. You'll love them. You really will. Uh, but believe me, bro, people, and it is subliminal, they do go and have a look, especially if I'm doing strange stuff like this with it. You know what I mean? Uh, and before you know it, mm -hmm. you've sold a dozen or so t-shirts and some koozies, if you know what they are, um, with guitar picks, all that sort of stuff. Believe me, bro, people just go crazy over merch. I don't know what it is, but people love to go and buy merch. So, okay. Please, let me help by advertising you, okay? Yeah, thank you. Anyway, let's wrap this up right now, but please don't go anywhere just yet. We're going to do a few photos and stuff afterwards, okay? All right. <laughs> You know, we have reggae artists from everywhere in the world. We really, really do. It's a strong movement all around the world. And I never get tired of having brand spanking new and good reggae. Just can't get enough of it. So believe me, Jazz Ward, love, love, love the work you do. I repressed. Got to say thank you so much for joining us here in New Zealand on Galaxy 107 FM, especially... Well, it must be going on to about 3 o'clock in the morning over there right now. So uh, I really do appreciate you making the effort to join us here at Galaxy. Uh, and uh, please, please, well, we'd love to have you back again. If you're releasing new music, please get in touch with Barbara. We would love to be able to talk about that and love to be able to follow you in, in your career as you go. Uh, I'm pretty sure by now that you may be familiar with the uh, Galaxy Artist page on Facebook. May I suggest, yeah. please use it. Please use it. If you've got a new song, if you've got a new logo, new poster, go into the opening of a shoebox. I don't care. Use it. Let everybody know because, believe me, the more times that people know who you are and what you are, the more times people will follow you. It's about building your fan base and building your career and per se. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Very cool. At the same time, are we going to talk about the magazine? Yeah, we will after. Yeah, okay. We would, uh, after this, I'm going to talk to you about uh, a good friend of ours coming out of India that has a magazine. We would love to put you in that as well. Lazy Indie Magazine, believe me, uh, touted to be the next Rolling Stone magazine coming up. In the, believe me, I talk to critics all the time. They love it as well. So hang in there, my friend. But in the meantime... Uh, let me tell you how happy we are to have, of course, <laughs> Rise Up TV, Big Records, and Sony Music The Orchard here at Galaxy. Love you guys. We really do respect everything you do, Mark and Lin uh, Lisa, Pamela, and Tim. Don, of course, in there as well, here at Galaxy.
Another Emily Hardest interview brought to you by Galaxy 107 FM in association with Rise Up TV. Legal record and Sony Music to watch it.